What's going on guys? This is Rob and we are here with the conclusion of Adam, the legend of blue Marvel. And I can almost guarantee I'm enjoying my vacation. So, uh, yeah. So I will be back. I think Wednesday, Tuesday or Wednesday of next week is when I get back. It's kind of weird talking to you guys. <laughs> it's almost like I'm talking to you while I'm on vacation, but I will be on vacation. So I'm recording these beforehand, but nonetheless, right? So in this video, what we basically cover here is the ending of it all, right? The conclusion of the whole thing, which is great the way this is done, because what you end up doing here is you initially pick up with really Adam Brashear showing up with the rest of the superheroes and just being like, okay, so there's only really one option that we have, which is to effectively disperse his energy, right? Me just kind of absorbing it and then dispersing Connor Sims across basically all existence. But the, the fear that the superheroes have is that in doing that, what it's going to do is it's going to let off such a large amount of antimatter energy that it'll actually rip open the fissure between the antimatter universe and the positive matter universe to such a degree that it'll basically destroy the world. And so they're actually resistant to Adam Brashear doing this. So much so that when Adam Brashear says, either you can help me willingly or you can just stand by and do nothing, but either way, I'm going to do this. When he races off, the mighty Avengers go after him. Him. And they actually end up fighting Adam Brashear in an effort to stop him. Now, this is kind of Adam Brashear's experience going toe to toe with these guys and, and their own experience, right? In the sense that Adam Brashear sees them as getting in his way and kind of a reminder of the way things went back when he stepped down at the request of Kennedy, right? Kennedy said, you got to step down. You got to walk away. Um, you know, it's for the betterment of everybody. And in this instance, the Avengers are saying, no, 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 no. You got to step down. You got to walk away. It's for the betterment of everybody. You can't engage in this. But in the mind of of Adam Brashear, he knew then, much like he knows now, that he's right, that he has to keep, he has to stay the course, he has to fight the fight. So when the Avengers show up here and they face off against him, understand it's not one of these like super lopsided battles that Kevin Grievous gives us here. Instead, like the mighty Avengers hold their own kind of, I guess, like they're able to hold their own to a degree. But the reality is that Adam Brashear is able to overcome all of them, right? Like Simon Williams, uh, Wonder Man, he's able to overcome Ares, he's able to overcome the Sentry. So with the exception to the Incredible Hulk, these are some of the strongest superheroes on the entirety of the Avengers roster. And Adam Brashear is taking all comers. Now there does come a point when Adam Brashear, when the Blue Marvel, fights the Sentry. And the fight between the two of them is pretty intense, but it's also incredibly fast. Now remember, the Sentry is like a, he's like a Superman analog. Honestly, Hyperion is closer to Superman than the Sentry is, but the Sentry's no slouch, right? This guy was able to go toe to toe with World Breaker Hulk. He's ridiculously powerful and they're trading blows just back and forth and back and forth. And so there's literally a point when the century, like once he kind of knocks Adam Brashear to the ground, he's like, stand down. Uh, I'm starting to get ticked off. And in response, Adam Brashear knocks him into the atmosphere, like literally punches him into orbit with one hit. That's how powerful Adam Brashear is. Now, one of the other things I also want you to notice here, he hasn't really hardly taken any damage from anybody, right? Like he has a, a cut, right? He has a little bit of blood that was drawn by the sentry, but that was it. But even then he was powerful enough to punch the sentry into orbit. It's like somebody showing up and, and knocking Superman into orbit in one punch. That's what this is. It's just a crazy level of power that Adam Brashear has. And so ultimately, because he's exhausted himself so heavily, even in his fight with the Sentry, when Robert Reynolds comes back, he can barely stand, Adam Brashear can barely stand, so seemingly at the moment, the two of them are pretty equal in power, and in fact, Adam Brashear basically passes out. And so at that point, they get him back to the Baxter building as a form of recovery, but also kind of to hold him in place, right, to keep him there so he can't necessarily get out and try to engage in the scheme again. And so what Susan Storm had done was actually go and grab Adam's wife and brought her here for no other reason than the fact that, like, his wife needs to be here. Now, the other part of this is his wife can bring a line of, of logic and reason that none of the Avengers can do, right, because it's really more of a gentler hand and a discussion that needs to be had because Adam Brashear isn't simply just fighting for the, the purpose of like trying to defeat Connor Sims. There's a lot that he's holding in and a lot of the anger that he harbors towards his wife is actually anger he harbors towards himself. Now, while the two of them are talking, of course, the Avengers themselves end up having to leave the Baxter building and travel out into New York because Connor Sims has finally emerged. And with all these antimatter storms that are erupting all over the place, they're basically destroying things that are out there, people are dying. And so for the Avengers, it's as much cleanup duty as it is using what weapons and, you know, ideas they've come up with, but they all fall short in comparison to the idea of Adam Brashear. His suggestion, as risky as it is, is really the only one that can save the day. So where he initially breaks out, right, he literally escapes his his, his confinement tube uh, for his healing process, he ends up seeing his wife. And where he initially turns a blind eye to her, or really just kind of turns his back to her, her response is enough, right? Like, I've had enough of this. You and I are married. 
which means that no matter how bad things get, we talk, right? That's the deal that we made. It's the bargain we made. Do things get bad? Do things get hard? Yeah, but we talk. We keep it going. That's just the way that it goes. It's the agreement that we struck. So you're not going to turn your back on me, Adam Brashear, and you're not going to walk away. You're going to talk to me because I know you. But despite how you may think about how our whole marriage started and all that kind of stuff, I know you. And what I know is you're not really mad at me. You're angry at yourself. I mean, sure, you're kind of pissed off because of how everything started, but like the last, you know, 30 years or 20 years or however long it is that we've been together, at the end of the day, it was the best decision. We shared some amazing times and those far outweigh any of the bad times and certainly this that we've endured as a couple. You're mad at yourself because President Kennedy asked you to step down and you said yes. You're mad at yourself because you could have been a hero out there and you could have been making the world a better place, but you didn't. You basically stood hidden away under this, this using this idea of, well, things might get worse if I make myself known as basically a shield for you to maintain what was by all standards of measurement, your own cowardice. Nobody put a gun to your head. Nobody told you that you couldn't come back. And it became quite clear after a while with all these different superheroes running around and all the stories you were reading and the X-Men and the Avengers and all that kind of stuff, you could have stepped into the role of being a superhero and everything would have been fine. You could have come back at any point in time, but you chose not to, right? Like at the end of the day, you want to blame me for the decisions that you made and how you feel about those decisions, but it's not my fault. It's your fault, Adam Brashear. So either nut up and accept that or just wallow in cowardice but whatever it is you need to be something better than this and you need to get out there and you need to you need to prove that you're right you need to tell them that you're right and if they won't listen to you make them listen to you and that's exactly what happens and that's exactly what he needed because what it does is it creates reconciliation that this is the woman he married and this is the woman he loves and so ultimately they actually put their problems to the side right like adam brashear forgives her for what it was that was done and then in turn he, she's like you know i love you and he's like you know i love you too and it's like you know well we'll get this sorted when everything's all all and done but right now baby i gotta get out there into the city and i gotta whoop some ass so he ends up flying out <laughs> <laughs> right ends up taking off out there and connor sims again is just kind of amping up in power and so ultimately adam brashear confronts him now what he does here and this is what's really kind of cool he ends up creating what's basically a cyclotron now when it comes to physics i don't know what that is i knew what it was when i was younger but i'm old now right i forget stuff you know my old age i'm 38 years old right this memory is not what it used to be you know? the thing behind this <laughs> is that he basically wants to create a system whereby the entire molecular structure of connor sims can be de stabilized more than it already is right now, right? So in effect, if we're talking about Connor Sims being a Jenga set, there's already a few pieces missing. It's teetering a little bit, but not quite on the verge of falling over. What Adam Brashear wants to do using a combination of the different powers of the mighty Avengers all operating in a way that he has outlined is to, in effect, start removing pieces from that Jenga set. And then once enough pieces are removed, he can deliver the killing blow and knock it over. Ideally, you don't knock over the Jenga set, but for the sake of this, sake of this example, that's our goal, is to knock over the Jenga set and I guess to lose the game? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but the point is this, that in all of them working together in an effort to disperse the energies of Connor Sims, it actually doesn't work. And there's a couple reasons why. The first is because Connor Sims is a lot more powerful than he was when he and Adam Brashear had previously fought. His antimatter energy has been continuously growing. The other reason is because with this huge amount of power, Adam Brashear simply can't siphon off enough of it and destabilize him in the way that he needs to be destabilized. And so as a result of that, it takes a couple shots to try to get it down. But before Adam Brashear can get to that second landing and to try to siphon off the power of Connor Sims yet again, ultimately Connor Sims ends up just letting off this massive amount of energy. And when he does, he ends up killing Candace. He kills the wife of Adam Brashear, which removes his ability to reconcile with her, or at least it seemingly does. They can't of course have a life together, but it's one of those things where all that pain and all that anguish gets set aside. Because in that moment there, right then, when she's passing on, he knows more than anything that he loves her. And that's really what it takes when it comes to that kind of a situation, right? When it comes to like the ending of relationships, marriages, friendships, what have you, it's only either when they're not there or when you're forced to accept the fact that they won't be there that you come to terms with realizing exactly how much you loved or cared about that person in the first place. And so what this does is it leads to Adam Bashir putting all that stuff to the side. But of course, once Candace effectively passes on and she essentially dies, that now it's just Adam Bashir and it's Connor Sims. The truth about this is that it's the final battle here. 
here. Nobody else could have stepped in and offered any real measure of a conflict here, right? Any real measure of a fight. The Avengers couldn't handle this. The Fantastic Four couldn't handle this. It really just is an Adam Brashear, Connor Sims fight. And initially it starts off as a kind of knockdown, drag out battle between the two, just a straight up fist fight. And where Adam Brashear says like, I tried to see things your way. I tried to take your approach, but at the end of the day, I can't do that, right? I can't force humanity to change and kill everybody who disagrees. I can't bring myself to do that. That if humanity is going to, to change and evolve, then humanity has to do it of its own volition. And if in the process, humanity is incapable of doing that and it ultimately destroys itself, then that's just the way things go. It's, it's the choice of the human race, right? The, the, you know, where I would argue as a person, right? Me, Rob Jefferson, I would argue of what use is freedom to a society that would use that freedom to destroy itself. The response of, of Adam Brashear here would be because that's their choice. It's the choice that humanity engages in. Those who could do something don't do anything, meaning that those who are doing something, whatever it is they want to have done, that's what gets done, right? As the fight goes on between the two of them, in the end, Connor Sims gets so exhausted from the battle that they endure because he's just expending so much energy, he can't hold his own against Adam Brashear anymore. And as he starts to weaken, Adam Brashear, at that point, having worn him down, then basically starts absorbing his energy, literally absorbing the entire essence of Connor Sims. And when that happens, Connor Sims is destroyed. But the last thing that Adam Brashear says to him, instead of doing this in a place of hate, he simply says, goodbye, Connor, I don't hate you. I pity you and what you've done, I forgive you. He says, I pity you and whatever you've done, I forgive you, Connor Sims. So he does it from a place of love as opposed to a place of death. And so following this, you pick up about a week later after all this is all said and done. Of course, Tony Stark invites uh, Adam Brashear to become a member of the Avengers. He actually doesn't do that. And in fact, um, Adam Brashear would not become a member of the Avengers until the second run of Mighty Avengers when Luke Cage was leading the team. Instead, you don't really hear much about Adam Brashear after this. Now, I will create an Adam Brashear playlist for those of you guys who really like the character of Blue Marvel, I will create a playlist that'll have like all the subsequent appearances. He does have a major role in Al Ewing's Ultimates. That's really where his character just shined after this story was in Al Ewing's Ultimates. And it made sense because after this story, Al Ewing wrote the Mighty Avengers run that Blue Marvel's in. And then it made sense that he would also write the uh, the Ultimates run that features Adam Brashear as well. But that's the story of Adam Brashear, guys, right? His, his wife, you know, before she died, it basically fashioned him a new costume because she believed that he would eventually want to become a hero one day. But at the end of the day, he basically kind of gets back out in the world and goes back to being a hero. So with that being said, guys, we're going to bring this video to an end. Again, I love Adam, the Legend of Blue Marvel, an absolutely phenomenal story. Again, I think it's the greatest superhero origin story in the history of Marvel Comics. But let me know what you guys think in the, in the comment section. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.